good morning everyone welcome to another podcast i'm out doing a bit of um, saltwater fly fishing today i'm out in anglesey uh, not far from rottenaiga uh, and i'm actually on one of the rocky headlands um, today in some lovely deep water uh, i've had a bit of a walk around earlier uh, there's a few sand eels being pushed into the beach I can't see any bass or anything following them in but there's plenty of people out on the beach and I'm not one of these people that wants to rock up and start casting a fly rod amongst a load of holiday makers so I've walked out to one of the headlands it's uh, a calm day overcast and um, but the sun's due to break through in an hour or two it's uh, fairly warm um, and um, the plan today really is to get on a heavy sinking line and really get down amongst these uh, rocks in this deep water and just see what we can catch if anything um, species here small pollock if we're really lucky we might get a rat um, if there's some uh, school bass which I'm sure there is coming close then there's a chance of a small schoolie and there's also a chance of a mackerel as well um, if I'm casting a bit further out but I think what I'm going to do to start off with almost is fish under my feet. I've, um, there's a real drop off here into very deep water. And I'm just going to fish pretty much two or three feet out, heavy sinking line, get down around the rocks uh, and see what we can do. So I've got my nine weight outfit today, which is a little bit heavy for the type of fish I'm likely to encounter. I'm not expecting anything major here. However, with me being rock fishing today, I am going to have to use the rod as a bit of leverage for actually to pull the uh, pull the fish up over the rock face. So I want something that's got a bit of backbone to it. And then there's a couple of nice little rock pools here. So if we do get into something, then I can swing them over, drop them in the rock pool uh, and unhook them. Let's get a bit of line out. So it's flat calm out in front of me, just the odd kayaker I can see further out couple of boys bobbing around the odd bit of blue sky and a very very gentle swell but it's pretty much flat calm really flies wise I've got about what have I got six feet a leader I've got a, a mini sand eel pattern so it's only small I think it's probably a size six or eight something like that and then actually just above there, about 12 inches above it, I've got a little size 10 dowel back. Um, now you might be thinking, why are you fishing with a dowel back? Well, sometimes what I've found is that, especially the smaller fish, will actually chase the sand eel up, follow it, but actually then take the dowel back. So um, it's a good option to have on a dropper, just in case... Uh, something follows. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not looking to break any records today. Just fishing around the rocks like this. I'm only expecting smallish fish. If anything, let's hope we get something. Um, so the dowel back might just accommodate a bonus fish here or there. We'll see. So I'm casting out about what, only 15 feet of line, something like that. But I'm going to really count it down to probably 20 or 30 seconds and let it get right down and then try a few different retrieves it'll be some fast ones some slow uh, try some strips and then holding it letting it sink back down we'll just um, try a variety of different retrieves and see if anything works like I said it's I think I said it's um pretty pretty much low or oh, it's probably just turned the tide and it's slowly making its way back in now I think there's a guy out yes he is there's a guy out on a a uh, a kayak probably about 500 yards from me and he's just got out a couple of rods so he's going to be doing a bit of uh, fishing from the old kayak by the looks of it And I'll probably have a bit of a scramble about today and try a few different spots.
And um, as you often see uh, reservoir anglers doing, I'm doing a bit of a hang as well, because what I've found with these pollock in the past is that they might they sometimes follow the fly all the way up to the surface. And if you just hang it and almost dip it along the surface at the end of your retrieve, almost under the rod tip, that can just entice them. They just uh, come and grab it. Retrieve, just a little dibble. Dib, 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 dib. Now I did have a bit of a follow then. I just saw a little, a little brown shape just move about three foot under the surface. So something's followed that up. I would have thought it'd be a small pollock. Oh, the, uh, the old sea kayak. Oh, start again. The old sea kayak has just come past and given me a fisherman's wave, which was nice. So often when uh, when I see people fishing these kind of marks, where you've got nice rocky marks and deep water. Especially on headlands of beaches like this, what I often see is people casting as far as they can, as far as they can out into the sea in front of them. And while that's okay for, for species like mackerel, which will tend to linger a bit further offshore, what you're often going to find is the, the wrasse and the pollock and even the bass are actually going to be under your feet, right round the rock under the ledges um, because that's where a lot of the crabs and the small fish um, and, and things like that are going to be and they can easily hide amongst the ledges and just nip out and attack and, and ambush fish as they, uh, or smaller fish as they swim past so actually fishing under your feet and um, the amount of times I've come out saltwater fly fishing and see people lobbing great big weights and spinners out as far as they can and I'm just dropping a line under my feet and start to catch a few fish uh, but yeah don't be afraid to fish close in right, I'll try a bit of a quicker retrieve now on this one I think yeah nothing on that one a slightly different spot just drop it down the left hand side of this ledge so one definite follow so far which is promising I might try a, a couple of different flies on, on the dial back instead of the dial back on the dropper as well just to see if I can tempt anything sometimes a uh, I've got some gold bead hairs here as well, some little nymphs, and sometimes the uh, the pollock and such like will snaffle them. Or even I've got some little shrimp imitations that might be good. Oh, another follow. That was a small fish. That was, but I just saw it. Uh, just saw its belly as it turned. Right, a couple of follows, no takes, so we'll keep on at it. I say it's, uh, it's just beautiful to be out on the uh, on the coast at this time of year. It's a perfect day. You can see the boys marking all the lobster pots uh, just out in front of me. I wonder if there's anything in those. Right, that's sunk down. Pull the retrieve up. Right, I'll go really slow on this retrieve and just do a, a slow figure of eight. With the odd quicker twitch in there, just to try and keep it in a zone a little bit longer.
All right. Let's try a little further out that way. So there's a, this is, like I said, it's like an area of headlands. So there's a big bay to my left that goes right into the sandy beach. And there's another big bay into the right. I'm right on the headland here. And uh, it's not too bad to get down, to be fair. Some of these marks are a real climb. And as I'm getting older, I'm finding I'm less inclined to do it. My knees don't seem to agree with it. But this is fairly easy, even at low tide. It's a lovely piece of water. And just to my right, there's a little in what's it, little inlet really I guess almost a tiny cove and it looks fairly deep in there that might be worth a little bit of a go as well I'm just going to keep persevering with this this area here it's very dark down there very deep I can't see the can't see the bottom even in low tide I don't fit my thinking lines getting anywhere near the bottom but hopefully just deep enough to get down to some of these uh, ledges where the, the fish are likely to be. I'm keeping one eye out all the time for any just activity further out as well obviously if a, at this time of year what you find is the shoals of mackerel and, and school bass will, will follow the sand eels in and the, you normally see the action on the surface so you'll see the sand eels leaping and some disturbances as the, uh, the fish come up and sh kind of herd them up to the surface and start hitting them. So I've also got one eye out and if opportunity arises, I'll put some longer casts out as well. And I, I might put some longer casts out anyway, just in case there's something going past, but I'll concentrate my efforts really just down in front of me on this ledge. The fish I'd really like to catch is a rat but they're hard to get on a fly rod you've got to be right down amongst it and really lucky right I'll try a couple of speculative longer casts I've had a few drops down there with the fly rod so let me uh, put a bit of a longer cast out, I think. Just pull one back. You never know, there might be a, a rogue mackerel passing or a little, little school bass. Maybe every, every 10 or 15 casts, I'll chuck a longer one out and just give it a bit of a pull back, a bit of a retrieve through the water. Again, just a bit of a hang at the end, see if anything's following. Nope. Right, I'll drop one down. Oh, now there is something there on the surface. I think that looks like, yes, yeah, a shoal of sand eel. So it's just going to put, put my cast out over that shoal, just in case there's anything there following it around. didn't see them uh, actually splashing but it's that clear that I can actually see the shapes under the surface and call you the skills that you learn from your especially river fly fishing you know observing and being aware of all the little bits of movement and thinking about fish lies um, all come into play with the saltwater fly fishing. But the key thing for beginners to remember is bar your big shoals of mackerel and things that are a bit further out, your shore species, what they love features just like all fish. So you're looking for rocky ground, rocks, ledges, kelp. Kelp especially is good for fly fishing because um, you can put on your floating line and you can 
you can fish above it you know you can fish and pull those flies above the kelp and the pollock and stuff will ambush them from underneath but look for features don't just be fishing in unless you really know where you are and you know exactly that there's going to be a certain kind of sandbar that holds bass at a certain time here on this beach unless you've got that knowledge and you're just fishing blind look for features and um, don't be afraid to like I have today to, to, to fish smaller flies as well because you know, yes you will catch fish on lovely big bass flies but unless you really know your good bass marks and your good pollock marks if you're just fishing blind round rocks you may find that the fish there are fish there but they're on the smaller size so if you want a bit of fun don't be afraid to fish slightly smaller patterns Well, not as any follows for a bit from any pollock, has had a couple, but we'll keep on at it. And then I might have a bit of a scramble across and uh, try a couple of different spots. And the jet skis out there as well, having a good power round. nice thing about this kind of fishing is you can actually even with a fly rod you can sit down I'm just perched on a rock now right, let's try a quick figure of eight oh another follow they must be really small fish just following in there uh, out of instinct but it's, it's lovely to see I just see uh, a bit of brown then a flash of silver as it turns quickly right a couple more casts and then I'll have a little uh, scramble over to my left I think there's another little protrusion of rocks that's going to be worth the look at On and off, on and off, and that was a better fish. That was a better fish. So I really let that get down and uh, held, it, held it for a bit and then um, started to retrieve and the, the rot it went right over. That wasn't just a, a little kind of rock pollock as it were, that was something a little bigger. Uh, went right over and felt two or three kicks and then it um, shook the fly off Just starting to break through the clouds now. But the clouds starting to break up. There was a real mist this morning when I looked out the window. You couldn't even uh, see to the end of the garden. It was completely misted over. But the forecast said about 
11 o'clock it's going to break up and we're probably about that now. I'm fully sun creamed up and got my extra wide brimmed hat on. So I should be fine. I've got my special lip sun cream on as well because I always find that yeah, when you're fishing out on the coast it comes off the water and you really do get it in the get it in the face. Now there's a shoal of uh, Sandy will come in past me again here. Just keeping one eye out, see if there's any little swirls behind them. I had another follow then. They're following this Sandy hill, but they're not taking it. Right, a little bit of a more speculative, longer cast. I do love this type of fishing. I think it's the one, it's being out on the, the coast, it's the environment. Two, they're wild fish. And three, you just don't know what you're going to see or what you're going to catch. You know, you know I know, I think there's probably going to be some small pollock and maybe the odd bonus species besides that but you know there's a chance of a bass there's a chance of a sea trout there's a chance of you know something odd like a flatfish if i can get it down amongst the sand it's it, you just don't know what's gonna what you're gonna catch i was um out here a year or two ago and a huge uh, uh salmon came out the water and just showed in front of me um, you know, just belly flopped. It was just, you, you don't know what you're going to catch, you don't know what you're going to see. It's just, uh, it's stunning really. Right, one more cast here and then we'll go for a, a bit of a rock. a rock. I keep saying one more cast, but then I see these little pollocks follow the fly and it keeps me uh, casting. But no, we'll, we'll, we'll wind in after this and uh, have a scramble across to those, if I can get there, that is. I'm blocked off, I'll come back. The tide's just starting to uh, pick up a bit now, you can tell the swell's picking up a bit. It's starting to come in a bit, which is good. I like fishing the incoming tide, although this, I imagine this particular mark fishes good in all tide heights, it's that deep. But I do like fishing an incoming tide. Right, let's have a, in fact I might just have a little cast off this other little ro rocky ledge just next to me here before I go moving. Let's do that, let's check my flies are okay. Yeah, looking good. Right. Let's just, yeah, I'll be able to get a fly out here. It's another rocky ledge, but I should just be able to get my, uh, rod out across it. In fact, that looks nice. There's a little gully just there as well. That might be worth a chuck, but we'll have a go here first. I'm always trying to put the fly down the sides of ledges. So if I can see, looking for the different changes of colour under the water, I can see kind of dark where it's deep water and light where there's a rock. And I'm always looking to put the line, lay it down two or three feet off the uh, lighter colour water just inside the dark colour water and the idea there is it's taking the fly down the side of the ledge where I'm hoping the fish will be. Let's give this a pull back here. Yes, summer in. What have we got here? Little pollock. There we are. Perfect. Only a little one, but hey, they put up a good old scrap on a uh, on a fly rod, even a little fish. There we go. Unhooked him straight away and dropped him back. Perfect. Well, it just shows you, didn't I? First, 
first cast on a little, only moved by three foot and uh, in straight away. Right, I'll pull it back out there then I think. I mean to spend, to spend the day just exploring this coastline with a fly rod and fishing all the little gullies and and little nooks and crannies is, is just heaven really. And of course it doesn't cost you a penny. So what I've been fishing for now about 35, 40 minutes. So I've hooked something decent and lost it. I've had two or three follows and I've uh, had a little pollock on the on the bank. So result really. move around go off to my left a bit here and fish this little gully so it's only a tiny little gully that's a sort of protrusion of rocks and there's just a I can get in just a little little bit of water that's uh, creeping in I can just put it in the gully and just strip it back through the gully can't actually get across the uh, rocks I was hoping to easily. I'll have to, to go up and um, the, the further rocks I mentioned further across I'm going to have to walk back up onto the headland and drop back down again by the looks of it. So I might just have a bit more of a fish around here and save my knees a little bit. So in terms of gear, although I've got my nine weight today, which is my kind of usual saltwater fly fishing setup for bass, um, to be honest with you, you could just use your standard reservoir trout kit, it'd be fine for this. You know, fishing these deep water, nice heavy sinking line, and then tie up or buy a few little sand deals, really, it's all you need. You don't have to have a special, I mean this is all specialist saltwater gear because I do quite a bit of this fishing but as long as you're rinsing your kit down well afterwards, you know just your normal trout gear. Leaders are nothing, I mean I've got strong leaders on because I'm around rocks here so it's about 10, 10 or 12 pound Maxima I think. But you know these these pollock and bass and mackerel and stuff they're not, they're not leader shy, you don't need to worry, get something strong on so you can get your fly off the rocks and undo your snags and if, you, if you're catching the rocks and you sorry if you're catching the rocks you know I like Maxima because it seems fairly resistant to abrasion so I don't mind scraping around the rocks with it and nothing fancy let's have a little look over this this side here a very deep cove that comes in looks really deep have a few chucks off here I think. I fished this uh, near here years back and I remember Again, similar tactics. I remember catching the biggest sand eel I've ever seen. Hooked it fair and square in the in the, uh, in the mouth. It took my fly. Absolutely huge. 
I thought at first, I could see the silver down there, I thought I'd hooked a, a little schoolie. And it's a great big sand hill. an RAF uh, training base very close to here so it's about this time they're just starting to take off I think so if you hear the odd roar it's the uh, jets taking off right just casting again fishing right on the ledge and um, just drop this just letting this line really stink because it looks incredibly deep here. It's dark blue, the water. There we go. So not only do we get to fish beautiful surroundings and catch a few little fish but we also get our own private air show right I'm going to put out a few real long ones Strip some line off this reel, and it'll cast a long way. This rod with the uh, with small flies on being a nine weight, and the line is a uh, got a nice short taper on it as well, so it won't take much to belt out a 80 foot cast or so. I've got a bit of room behind me. There we go. There we go. Two fault casts. It is the time of year when the, the mackerel should be in. It's just hit and miss. I mean, you can spend all day off somewhere like this with, you know, a team of eight feathers and whacking it out and pulling it back and have nothing at all. Or you could, you could catch bucket falls. It's just from the shore, it's potluck really. So it's just worth a speculative cast. But it really would be a bonus to pick something up further out, I think. Try going out this way. Nice day for casting actually. There's just a very gentle breeze, but it's very gentle. There's nothing there. Uh, it's blowing the line around. That, that's often why I, this is my go-to outfit for salt water really, this nine weight. For, for bath and, uh, and, and things like that, just because I'm quite often fishing a breeze and I always want something that's going to punch through a bit better. The exception is really if I'm fishing for mullet then I normally drop it right down to a five weight or even a four sometimes. Oh now there was, there was a bit of movement out there actually. I'm just looking at where I'm casting and about 10, 20 foot further, there's definitely flash, so some, oh, 
that way in. Just come off. Yes, that definitely just hooks something. That was very strange. So, um, as I was casting, what just looking at a line landing, about 10 or 15 feet further out from where the fly landed, there was a definite splash. And I did two or three pulls and the line went tight. But then off again straight away. So, I'm going to get that straight back out there. I wonder what that was. Strange, it didn't feel like a fish, but I'm, I'm fishing in complete open sea. There's no rocks there. So, unless it just hit a piece of weed. Um, definitely tightened up. Let me just get this line sorted. I'm trying to cast too much line there. It's weird in the sea looking for rises, but it's, uh, I guess it's what I'm doing effectively. It's just looking for any sign of fish. was bizarre. I said the only thing is it could have just uh, could have just hit a piece of kelp or something and tightened it up. Try a bit to my left. I'm gonna have to be a bit quicker on the retrieve here because I can see the water's a bit rockier and shallower. So just try and strip it back before the, the fly sinks too deep and gets around the rocks. Well, I'll have one more long one. Oh, yes, here we are. This is a better fish. <laughs> Do you know what it is? It's two fish. <laughs> I've got I've got one on the sand eel and one on the dropper. Two pollock. Fantastic. <laughs> right, let me just drop these in this rock pool and unhook them. <laughs> Fantastic. Wonderful, just wonderful. Let's just drop these straight back. Perfect. Just perfect. One on the sand eel, one on the dowel back. That felt lovely, that, with a double hook up. Right, let's get it out again. No wonder it felt like a better fish. <laughs> I thought, oh, I'm into a a decent sized pollock here that for, for, for around the rocks, you know, maybe a half pounder or something like that. And uh, I mean, they weren't bad fish, they were, I don't know, 10 inches or something. You know, a little rock pollock, as it were, but the two of them together just uh, felt great. Put a right bend in the nine weight. <laughs> I think it's the first time I've had that. Hammer in again. 
better fish, definitely a better fish. Yes, a lot nicer. Another nice pollock, a lot bigger this time. Fantastic. Drop him in the rock pool. So the fish are really starting to come on. Maybe just as the tide is pushing in, it's just uh, it's just spurred them into action. Right. So I've unhooked. I put him in the rock pool and unhooked him, popped him back and took a quick photo as well just for just of him in the rock pool so what I'm actually doing is putting longer casts out now and uh, whereas before I was getting more follows on the dropping in down the rock ledges I'm putting longer casts out letting it sink more a quicker retrieve and I've had two fishing or three fishing two casts so I'm just sorting my line out after that fish and drop it in again but there's obviously some fish stirred up down there now which is just what we want I was pleased with that last fish it's a really nice put up a put in a really nice bend in the rod so I'm really getting amongst them now So I'm counting down to about about 20-ish. So it's probably getting down what in this well 15 15 foot or so, I would have thought, something like that. And then um so I'm really getting the line down and anchored, and then I'm fairly quick retrieve. Nice big strips. I'll have 10 more minutes and stop for a, a cup of coffee. The wind's just picking up a bit now as well. So what we had, one, two, three, four pollock. Three small ones and one that I'd say is the nicest fish. I mean, don't get me wrong, these aren't monsters. These are, when I say nicer fish, I mean nice for the environment we're in. But there will be the odd bigger one down there as well. The odd one. But, uh, this kind of fishing is just all about having fun, really. It's not chasing specimens, I was just out to enjoy myself and see what I can catch. Nice strips back again. Another follow then from a tiny fish and just had a little had a little go at the sand eel on the surface as I was dibbing it along but he was a real tiddler. I think it's important as well to if you're going to fish marks like this to make sure you do come with a heavy sinking line um, a lot of the stuff you read about saltwater fly fishing is all about floating lines because a lot of time people are fishing for bass it's a very popular quarry and, and a lot of the time yeah bass you're fishing shallow water um, maybe only fishing in three or four feet of water sometimes so a floating line is absolutely perfect you're going to come and fish rocky marks and deep water, bring a heavy sinker then you can get right down to the ledges where these fish are going to be
Well, I think that's that's me done. I've had a wonderful morning out on the coast. What have I had? I've had four or five pollock, one half decent one, the rest small, and as a bonus, a, uh, a double hook up as well. Um, thank you so much for listening. For more information on our fly fishing lessons and guided days, it's www.peaksflyfishing.com and for our flies and tackle and equipment, it's in shot.peaksflyfishing.com. Until next time, thank you. Bye-bye.